everyone I'm Annie and I'm starting today's vlog a little bit early because I already have my TBR for May picked out and I've just finished What Hunts Inside the Shadows which is book two of the Flesh and Bone series which was the main thing that I wanted to get read in April so I finished that so I'm pretty happy with that I didn't really enjoy book two that's not really the point of this video. The point of this video is these five books here. So if you haven't seen Blind Picking my May TBR, don't look at this stack. Go watch that video. I'll link it in the description and in the cards. But we have this stack here. And because there's five, I figured let's just get started reading rather than spending the last week of April starting something else and then probably not finishing it in the last week. And then that carrying over into May and I really want to make May like solely about these books so I'll just start early. So we have The Spanish Love Deception, Ember in the Ashes, Lady Smoke, The Bone Shard Daughter and Ninth House. Now honestly Ninth House is the one I am most excited for so we are going to be starting with that. Of course I definitely did not think ahead when I put that at the bottom of the stack. But we're going to start with Ninth House. So in my May TBR video which like I said, if you haven't seen it, go and watch it. I did go over all the synopsis of everything, but as I pick these ones up, I am going to go over the synopsis again. So, Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. Galaxy Alex Stern is the most unlikely member of Yale's freshman's class. A dropout and the sole survivor of a horrific unsolved crime, Alex was hoping for a fresh start. But her free ride comes with a catch. She's been tasked with monitoring Yale's secret societies, notorious haunts of the rich and powerful. Now there's a dead girl on campus and Alex is the only person willing to look deeper because the societies are far more sinister and extraordinary than anyone ever imagined. They tamper with forbidden magic, they raise the dead and sometimes they prey on the living. So this got nominated for Best Fantasy I think of 2019 um, and also we've got a little note at the top here from Stephen King. Obviously we know that Stephen King does thrillers and horrors and stuff so I'm very intrigued and I've said this before um I somehow managed to end up with the Waterstones exclusive edition entirely by accident because the regular edition the scales on the snake are kind of this like holographic-y kind of metallic color um and I really wanted that one but when I was picking this up the corner the front corner of the cover was damaged and Whilst I'm not the kind of person that like really cares too much, I mean, I've literally got a book that my dog kind of partially ate and I haven't replaced it because I'm like, well, at the end of the day, it looks what it is. And whilst I don't really care too much about books getting damaged, it makes a difference if I buy them damaged. Don't ask me why. But I wanted the one that wasn't damaged, so I ended up with this one and I really wasn't sure about the colour. As it sat on my shelf, I kind of learned to love the colour. Turns out it's the exclusive edition. I think I'm most excited for this because of the the sort of like thriller aspect that I'm expecting from it. Just because like I don't really read thrillers. It's not generally my genre. Fantasy is, romance is. So I'm really excited to read something a little bit different. So I thought this would be a great one to start with. I mean, I know I'm going to love all of the books on this list. I just, I have a good feeling. I have a good feeling, but... We're starting with Ninth House. There was a thing that went around on TikTok quite a while ago and it was like name something that you picked up on TikTok that has become an unconscious standard practice in your life or something along the lines of that and this is it. So I was like so concerned. My table is so wobbly. I was so concerned when I first saw someone do this but basically you just like take a couple of pages from the front and from the back and you just kind of like smooth them out and it helps relax the spine so you're less likely to get any sort of like breakages, creases, etc, etc. So I now do this with like every single book and like granted it's not like 100% like some of them you still get a couple of creases while you're doing this which is a bit of a shame. I try not to crack my spines. I mean like I said like I'm not gonna like have a meltdown over it if it gets a little bit damaged like it's a book. I know I've loved it. I don't live in a perfect world sadly but 
I do my best to try and keep them looking as nice as possible because it just looks nicer on your shelf I think and you like I have definitely have some copies of some books that I've had for donkey's ears and like they look loved borderline tired <laughs> but they look loved and I kind of like the fact that they look so loved like I'm literally looking over that and I'm like solely looking at my Percy Jackson series like the first set of five Percy Jackson and the Olympians because I've got the original covers and like that is a loved set of books I've said it before I'll say it again like I will reread those until the end of time nowadays I just I try to keep things as nice as possible so this is my unconscious standard practice not so unconscious but you get what I'm saying this is my standard practice that I picked up from TikTok. And as far as I know, no one has ever used magic to fix an election. Oh, the vibes. Okay. <gasps> Look at this map. Ooh, so it tells you, okay. Oh, I love that the map, like, it's got the labeling at the bottom. You don't just have to, like, kind of guess or try and fit it in with with stuff I was so right when I said that I had a good feeling about this book. Honestly, this is amazing. I am loving it. So I've just started chapter six, I'm about 90 odd pages in. And so we've got sort of like these two points of view. It's all done in third person. It goes just two in a ball. It's all done in third person, but it's like that close follow third person. So we've got the chapters that are labelled winter, which is Alex's point of view. And then we've got the chapters labelled last fall, which is Darlington's point of view. And it's so interesting. And normally I'm very much kind of like, I want to know everything about the main character. Like I want to know like so much about them, like by the time we get to like the end of chapter one. And then this is not like that at all. I'm just starting chapter six and there's like so much that's like still a mystery. Obviously we've got this murder on campus, we've got these secret societies, so it's like combining so many things, like it's combining like contemporary, which I'm so into at the moment, fantasy, which of course we love, and then we've got thriller, which is kind of like a little bit of like a new find for me. I just like can't even process right now because it's just so good, I'm loving this. Okay, you guys, we are really getting into this now. I'm on page 356 and pff, there's a lot going on. Like, I am not really a murder mystery kind of gal. I'm not the person that, like, says he's the one that did it at the start of the TV program. Like, I'm so bad at, at like, picking that information out. Um, But this is so interesting. So we, find, we found out a bit more about what's going on with Darlington. I'm sad. I've come to love him. I'm trying not to give away spoilers, but it makes me sad. I am sad. I really didn't think I was gonna have much of an emotional connection to this book, but I'm having a bit of an emotional connection and I'm sad about it. We're finding out more and more about Alex, her past, everything that she's been through, sort of chapter by chapter, it's all getting revealed, which I'm really, really loving. It's tying in really well to the like murder mystery that we've got going on. So she's working with Centurion, she's investigating everything that's going on, like learning more about the magic. We're getting to learn more about what each of the societies can and can't do. 
sort of like where they're at with things that's really fun and really interesting it's not just like information dump at the start here's like everything you need to know and then we'll get into the story I like the fact that we're getting it sort of like piece by piece at the same time as she's kind of working it out which is really really nice so I've got about 100 pages left we are full vibes full steam ahead it's literally day three and I've got 100 pages left and I am living, breathing, dying for this. guys five star read i'm obsessed honestly this is so good so it's like i've said throughout this whole little bit about ninth house thriller and mystery and murder and stuff is new for me i'm very much romance girly and we didn't really get near that but i am so obsessed i have so much emotional connection to this book that ending was a <laughs> what's a whirlwind there was a lot going on very dramatic a lot to take in i'm still trying to process oh my gosh i feel everything right now i can't even like pinpoint what i'm feeling i'm just feeling everything I almost feel like the ending was written first and everything else was written before it because that was just so good. Everything came together so perfectly. Everything was wrapped up just like so beautifully and horrifically and magically. And I am amazed. I'm obsessed. I'm going to be talking about this for ages. I have finished this on the 27th of April. I'm probably not gonna get to finishing anything else in the next few days, so 100% guaranteed. This is top pick for April. Oh my goodness gracious me. I need to go out and get the next book and read that like ASAP because I don't wanna let go of these characters. I'm a little bit sad the book is over. I don't wanna let go of these characters. I need the next book. <laughs> Oh, I made that squash really strong. I kind of like it. Good morning, everyone. So, finished Ninth House, the first book on my May TBR. <laughs> Still technically in April, so I feel a little bit guilty for starting early, but I was really worried that I wasn't going to be able to get through everything because my time kind of seems to just disappear before my eyes. And some weeks... Like last week, I have loads and loads of time for reading and are able to read like a whole book like super, super easily. Um, and there's going to be other weeks, which I feel like I'm definitely going to have at least one this month, where I just really do not get any time at all. We got a new set of nails, did my nails last night, so that was really nice. Just sort of had a chill evening rather than getting started straight away on the next one. And I will be completely honest, it was entirely intentional, the colour that I picked for my nails, but... It must be fate because they perfectly match an ember in the ashes, which has been on my TBR for literally forever. And it's one of those ones that I keep seeing on my shelf and I'm like, oh, like I'll get to that. I just want to finish this or oh, I'll get to it once I've read this series or once I've read this new book and after I've done this and we all have them. So don't tell me that you don't have at least one of these kind of books on your shelf because we all do. Be honest with yourself. We all have them, but the nails match, the dice rolled it, it is fate that an ember in the ashes is next. However, I do have a book club with my friends on Wednesday, and because I have a couple of days of quiet in the house, or 
relative quiet in the house because Nate is off on a boys trip for one of the stag do's. So I also have Electra to read. Now I'm not finishing this entire thing. We've read the prologue on part one. So I've got to read part two before Wednesday. And then after Wednesday, we'll be reading parts three and four. We've read Ariadne as a group and I loved it, loved it, loved it. I did talk about that in a video, which I will link in the description and in the cards. So we are now reading Electra and I already knew some bits and pieces about this book where I'd sort of studied Electra through school. Um, so I am obsessed. I am loving it. Of course, it's Greek mythology. Pretty much anything that's Greek mythology, you can guarantee that I am like 99% gonna love it. The buddies are screaming. If it's not one of the dogs, it's the birds making a noise. <laughs> What's new? But yeah, so I do need to read the whole of part two, which I think is only about 100 pages, so it's not going to take me very long. But I'm currently sat on the floor because I'm going to do some Pilates because I need to build Pilates and yoga into my routine because I'm not doing enough of it and I just want to do some low-level exercise, get myself moving. So that is what I'm going to start my day with. So yesterday I kind of turned into a bit of a vegetable on the sofa because um, I think I'm coming down with a cold. I don't think it's hay fever. I think it's a, a bit of a cold. Um, so I'm feeling pretty rubbish. I'm feeling pretty sorry for myself. Um, yesterday I had like zero brain power. Like I tried picking up a lecture. I tried reading and I literally got about like half a sentence in and my brain was like what's going on so today i want to read 50 pages of electro which will take me to part three ready for book club on wednesday night and then i do want to get an ember in the ashes started because i'm really excited for that one um and then i guess we'll just see how far i get today i'm not expecting loads <laughs> totally forgot to go through the synopsis of both of these books so I will start with Electra because I've got to the end of part two I am at the start of part three so I know that this book is going to end up getting finished in the month of May because of our schedule of book club so I am up to speed with book club and then once we've had a little meeting and discussion then I will be working to finish this. So let's start with the synopsis of this. The House of Atreus is cursed, a bloodline tainted by a generational cycle of violence and vengeance. This is a story of three women, their fates inextricably tied to this curse and the fickle nature of men and gods. The sister of Helen, wife of Agamemnon, her hopes of averting the curse are dashed when her sister is taken to Troy by the feckless Paris. Her husband raises an army against them and determines to win, whatever the cost. Princess of Troy and cursed by Apollo to see the future but never to be believed when she speaks of it. She is powerless in her knowledge that the city will fall. The youngest daughter of Clytemnestra and Agamemnon, Electra is horrified by the bloodletting of her kin, but can she escape the curse or is her own destiny also bound by violence? So I already kind of know a lot about what happens in this book because where I sort of previously studied various Greek tragedies and plays and the Iliad and whatnot. So this is really interesting for me to read, even though I kind of already know sort of what's happening, just because we're getting it from the three ladies' perspectives. And it really puts like a really nice twist on everything that is sort of like known about it at the moment. Um, and I'm really loving this point of view being from the women. And it's not just 
their point of view it's also the way that they're brought up and how they think about everything and how certain actions of men change the way they think and the way they see the world and I'm really really loving this I kind of don't really want it to end um but at the same time I'm also really excited for the ending because I think it's going to be so dramatic I'm just like I'm getting so many like Greek tragedy vibes and weirdly enough I've kind of been wanting a tragedy to read <laughs> I love happy ever afters and I want happy ever afters like 99.9% .9 of the time but I've really been vibing for a tragedy so in ember and the ashes like I said this is one that's been sat on my shelf like literally forever and now that I've gotten up to speed with a lecture for book club on Wednesday and ember and the ashes is my next focus Vow your blood and body to the empire. Keep your heart for yourself. An orphan fighting for her family, a soldier searching for his freedom, a story burning to be told. Leia is a scholar living under the iron-fisted rule of the martial empire. When her brother is arrested in the dead of night for treason and her loved ones slain, Leia must go undercover as a slave to the empire's greatest military academy in exchange for assistance from those who claim they can save her brother from execution. The Academy's finest soldier, Elias, is secretly its most unwilling, but before he can act on the desertion he plans in his heart, he's ordered to participate in a ruthless contest to choose the next martial emperor. When Leia and Elias's paths collide, they will find their destinies are inescapably intertwined and their choices will rock the future of the very empire they fear. So in all honesty, I don't really have much planned except for reading, but I have been shopping this morning. Just very quickly before I update on where I'm at with Ember and the Ashes and everything that I'm thinking with that, I picked up a couple of books. So first up, we've got from Lukov with Love. Now, I really enjoyed Icebreaker earlier in the year, and I've heard a lot of people online say that this is basically Icebreaker, but better, which considering it's an enemies to lovers, it's like an ice skating thing, I'm like, hey, I'm here for it. I'm like a baby deer on ice so you ain't never gonna catch me on like ice skating so I will just live vicariously through books and I love enemies to lovers so I grabbed this also picked up Ithaca by Claire North so this is basically Penelope who is the wife of Odysseus Odysseus being the ancient Greek hero who went to the Trojan War and then got lost on his way home and went through all these like stuff but so this is more from Penelope's side. When I've read the Odyssey, like I kind of sort of know a little bit about what happens to her, but there's not really much of a focus on her. So I think this is gonna be really interesting. And I've got a cute little bookmark with it, which I'm not mad about. I will take it. And then I picked up The Sun and the Star by Rick Riordan and Mark Oshiro, which I am so super excited about. I have been doing a bit of a Percy Jackson reread. I kind of paused that a little bit. Um, but it was meant to be in preparation for this book. I wanted to read like everything up to this point. Um, so this follows, primarily follows Nico D'Angelo, who we meet in the first series, and then we see him again at various points throughout other Rick Riordan books. And I love Nico D'Angelo. He's so adorably sweet. So I cannot wait to read this. But an ember in the ashes. So I've just started part two. So I'm on page 134 and it's, oh, it's very slow. Part one has been a bit of a slog to get through. I feel like it's quite slow. I say there's not a lot happening. I feel like there is stuff happening. I just don't really have much of an investment in the stuff happening. We've got our main girl, um, Leia, and she has just found the resistance and is 
getting in with them and trying to sort bits and pieces out to break her brother out of prison and bits and pieces and then we've also got our main guy who's Elias Elias I don't know which way you say it I'm saying it Elias in my head it's probably wrong I don't really care he has just been basically told that he's got to do these trials to become the emperor or whatever and isn't gonna escape from the compound thing the mili I don't really know the military so basically like the first 120 odd pages has pretty much been the setup for this and basically just like getting her into the resistance and in with them and getting him into the trials and kind of like named as one of the people doing the trials um aside from that not a lot's really happened so it's quite a slow paced book I generally don't enjoy slow paced books but I'm gonna keep reading a bit more I'm not really loving it I'm I'll be honest I'm kind of sad because I really wanted to love this because there's a lot of people that love this and I don't think it's a bad book but I just don't like slow paced books so it's just not really doing a lot for me right now I can't do it I'm just not excited about An Ember in the Ashes every time I pick it up I think to myself oh if you were just a different book which I feel guilty saying because it's not a bad book. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm just not invested in it. I feel like this is kind of the reason why I don't really read a lot of like epic fantasy or if I do, I kind of like take months to read it because they're generally a little slower paced and I don't really like slow paced books. And I'm just not that invested in it. It's kind of slow. I'm kind of bored. Like, I look at it and I go, oh, I'd rather do anything else than read it. Which, I hate feeling that way. It doesn't get me excited. So, I'm gonna put it down. I might pick it up later in the month. I don't know. I'm putting it down for a little bit. I want to read a romance. So, I'm going to read The Spanish Love Deception. I'm really excited about this one. I, I just need a romance. Like, Ninth House had, like, no romance in it. An Ember in the Ashes. Like... I've read a hundred and something pages is giving me no romance. I'm really excited about this. I mean, it's a pretty chunky book to be fair. Um, and I know that this one is a slow burn. Oh, it's damaged a little bit. Um, I know that this one is a bit of a slow burn, but it says a steamy slow burn. So, and I have no issue with slow burn, but slow burn rather than glacial melt. <laughs> slow burn instead of no burn that's hilarious <laughs> i mean you're not wrong there was no burn a wedding in spain the most infuriating man three days to convince your family you're actually in love catalina martin desperately needs a date to her sister's wedding especially when her little white lie about her american boyfriend has spiraled out of control now everyone she knows including her ex-boyfriend and his fiance will be there she only has four weeks to find someone willing to cross the Atlantic for her and aid in her deception. NYC to Spain is no short flight and her family won't be easy to fool. But even then, when Aaron Blackford, the six foot four, blue eyed pain in the arse, offers to step in, she's not tempted even for a second. Never has there been a more aggravating, blood boiling and insufferable man. But Catalina is desperate and as the wedding gets closer, the more desirable an option Aaron Blackford becomes. <laughs> I don't even know why I'm crying, nothing is sad has happened, but I'm crying. So I finished The Spanish Love Deception last night. I basically read the entirety of it in one day because I kind of only really started a couple of pages on Saturday night and I just basically spent the whole of Sunday reading which was so so nice 100% obsessed five stars I absolutely love it this is what makes me happy about reading it's just being so invested and so in love with the book and the characters and the story that I just like literally cannot even put it down 
So I really love uh, Catalina and Aaron. I really love the way that like you feel like the characters wholeheartedly believe that they hate each other but obviously as the reader we know they end up together so we're sat there like picking out little bits going mm -hmm, like that's gonna come back later and you're gonna you're gonna think completely different and that's what I really love about like romance stories specifically but I really liked them I really did enjoy their relationship I love the development of everything I love like so many of like the little intricacies which I don't really want to go into detail of because I feel a little spoil it but there are so many things that are just amazing about this book it was a complete five star read for me I think it's got like half a million ratings on goodreads so like that's for a reason that is very clearly for a reason this is a great book if you haven't read it do it I know that I am so late to the game on this but it's fine because it was great. I had a fabulous time. I really, really enjoyed it. And this is exactly what makes me love reading is getting so invested. So following on from that, I have been reading a little bit more of Electra. We had book club the other night. I've got sort of like two weeks to get to the end of it. So I've been reading a little bit today. So I've got, I'm on page what, 276 out of 338. So there's not really that much left to go. So I am really enjoying this. I loved Ariadne, again, for very sort of similar reasons that I'm really enjoying this because it's a retelling of something that I personally already know in terms of the mythology of things, but it's retelling it from a different perspective and that's what I'm really enjoying. I will have more to update after I have finished and we've done book club discussions but this is really shaping up to be a five star read for me as well. Now because apparently I cannot go shopping and have any sort of semblance of self-control, I walked out with more books. So I picked up Atlanta by Jennifer Saint, which is the next one in the series. So you've got Ariadne, Electra, Atlanta. Um, this is the one that I actually really don't know that much about. So Atalanta was the only female Argonaut with Jason and the Argonauts going after the Golden Fleece and bits and pieces. And I kind of know a little bit about the story of Jason and the Argonauts, but in all honesty, like not loads. Um, so I'm really excited for this. I think this is going to be a really, really good one based on the way that Ariadne and Electra have gone. I have such high hopes. So I picked up Rick Riordan's newest book the other day, but I don't have all of the Trials of Apollo series. I have one and two on my shelf. So I picked up three and four because they didn't have five when I went in. But again, so I've never actually read, I think I only got halfway through book number one. I own book number two, but I've never read it. And obviously have never read these. So I'm kind of <laughs> doing a little bit of catch up and... Part of me really wanted to do all of this catch up before I picked up the new book, The Sun and the Star, but that is not gonna happen because I cannot wait to read that book because I love Nico D'Angelo. And I will get to this probably very soon. I'm on such a Greek mythology kick if we couldn't tell. So back to the TBR, a little bit of a halfway point update. So Ember in the Ashes started at page 147. I'm not obsessed, I'm not really enjoying this, I have no investment and I kind of don't really want to finish reading it, at least at the moment. I will probably, I mean I will leave the bookmark in here and I will come back to it at a later date. I couldn't tell you when because it's probably going to sit there on my little TBR stack that has a tendency to kind of sit there for months. <laughs> but it's probably going to end up on that stack. Now, unfortunately, because I know that these two books kind of follow a bit of a similar line in terms of the fact that they're fantasy, they're YA, there's no, like, steamy romance. But the Bone Shard Daughter is the first in its series, so obviously I don't really know a lot about this. Um, and I've heard some really, really good things about this, so I'm like, yes, I do want to read it. I'm just, I'm not particularly excited to read it right now. And then Lady Smoke is the second one in the series. And I did quite enjoy the first one. It's currently on loan with a friend of mine. But when I was reading the blurb, it just kind of 
it feels like it's taken like a really left turn. So she auctions herself as a bride. And I'm like, where did this come from? Like, you, like, this doesn't, this doesn't make sense. Like, in book one, she was having a bit of a thing with the prince. But this is not the direction I thought this was going to go in, in all honesty. And, I mean, it's a really nice floppy cover. But I'm not that, like, like, that's not enough to make me super excited to read it. And I'm just, I'm not, like, dying for it right now. In all honesty what I really want to do is completely scrap the TBR, stick to my mood reading roots. This is my issue with TBRs, is I set a TBR and I'm like so excited at the time. I'm like, yes, this is great. And then I start reading it and then I'm like not in the mood for any of it. And then it just goes straight out the window. And guess what? We're doing it again because I literally want to read Electra. I've got a couple of other romance books. I've got tons of Greek mythology and Greek mythology inspired books that I am dying to read. There's so much on my shelf I'm like I really am so excited to read and none of these fall within that category and that makes me a little bit sad because I was really really wanting to stick to a full TBR for this month and like really go all in with it but I'm just so not excited for any of this. But I don't know what I want to read. I'm gonna finish Electra for book club and then we will figure it out. obsessed this was so good honestly so I really actually enjoy the fact that it's it feels completely different to Ariadne so even though I kind of knew everything that was going to happen seeing it from the perspectives that we see through Clytemnestra, Electra and Cassandra is so interesting and just getting to see the way of how they interact with the world that they're in, how different situations then feed into decision making is really interesting. And the way that it's different from Ariadne is Ariadne very much felt like the women have to then deal with the actions or the consequences of men's actions. Whereas this was very much sort of like a level above that where it was like, I'm not dealing with the consequences of men's actions, like, in just like its entirety, like they are gonna have to deal with it themselves and like I'm gonna make them deal with it kind of thing. Very much from Clytemnestra's point of view. From Electra's point of view, it was just like so interesting how she's like, I'm just gonna like do what I can to live the life that I feel like I need to. And she just kind of like, for a lot of it, she kind of like keeps herself out of the way and then she takes herself like out of sort of this like main situation towards the end. And then obviously with everything that goes down, I'm trying really hard not to spill this, but with everything that goes down, you know, she gets really heavily involved, but she doesn't necessarily have to deal with the outcomes of men's actions in the same way that Ariadne and Phaedra had to in the other book. I knew I needed a Greek tragedy. I loved this. This was five stars as well. I've had some really great books recently, but this was another five star from Jennifer Sane. I loved this one. I loved Ariadne. I am so, so excited to read Atalanta, which is sat on my shelf, and I really want to read it, like, right now. <laughs> if you don't know anything about Electra going into this, I can just imagine like how much is extra just has to be like unpacked with all of that but obviously knowing everything that happens you get to sort of like see all the intricacies that kind of like build up into what is the story and I loved it loved it loved it so that is going to be it for this video you guys my mood reading literally killed my TBR it all went downhill but we had some amazing reads come out of the first half of this month. So I really don't know what I'm going to be reading next. I guess I'll find out later today, tomorrow, in the next few days, what I feel like reading. But thank you so much for coming to hang out. If you check out any of these books or if you have read them before, 
drop it down in the comments let me know let's have a discussion while you're down there like and subscribe and i'll see you next time bye